Very good. I'd like to bring the meeting to order. It's, it's 602. Quinton Finance Committee Select Board meeting, April 16th, 6 p.m. First, I'd like to uh, ask if everyone's had a chance to review the minutes. Yes. And do I have a uh, I make a motion we approve the minutes second the last meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody's here. Everybody's here. We don't have to have a roll. Very good. Okay. So right now we're going to get into our agenda. And the first item on the agenda, first department, is the Board of Health. And fortunately, we have Grant Fortino uh, on Zoom. <laughs> In front of us. Um, Fran, we have your budget uh, details as always. Uh, would you like to speak to it? Which one? I got about five budgets. <laughs> oh, let's, let's just start with the Board of Health. Okay. Um, well, we're just uh, requesting level funding, even though um, duties go up and down depending on what crisis happens. So, on that budget, it's just level funding request. Fine. Anybody Good. have any questions no. regarding Board of Health budget? All right, next. We've got Foothills Health District, Brand. Mm -hmm. um, that's also a level funding request. We have uh, in the past gotten grants from the state. The, um, Health Excellence Grant, and we continue to get that at, at least for the next year or two. So that budget's going to stay pretty level. Okay. Do you, you foresee that grant being a reality? It is a reality. No, no. Oh, disappearing? <laughs> State has promised 10 years worth. We'll see. Okay. All righty. Okay, let's move on to our. I have a question. Okay, is question. There, Brian, is there any turnover in the Foothills office? Seems like. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have. Um, we're down uh, an inspector. Actually, we we have a job. We've had two uh, positions advertised. Did Mark Mickey get you? inspectors, and they get pinched? Did Did Mark leave or did Nikki leave? Pardon? Did Mark leave or did Nikki leave? Uh, Nikki left. Okay. She had some um, uh, issues, personal issues, and some work in Texas or some health health issue where she went back to Texas for a little while. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's some issues in the in the office that we're working on, but hopefully, it'll there's get straightened out. I understand. Okay. okay. Any other questions regarding the Foothills Health District? Okay, let's move on to the transfer station. Brand, what's going on there? Um, you can see the the budget has gone up. Um, oh, you can't see? I can right here. Right here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, mostly the personnel, the staff. We've been very lucky, as you all know. Um, to have Regina around, and um, we had right. Quint and Roger, who are both vets, veterans also of the transfer station, but Quint has, um, is on the permanently disabled list, and so we have right now an 82-year-old Roger and a um, youngster who is still going to school, but we, um, we realized that at this point, uh, we are going to need probably two people on staff at the transfer station every time because we have, um, like I said, a relatively old crew and um, a volunteer who can sometimes be there, but less than in the past. And we've been very fortunate to have Regina, as you know, helping out. Um, we have... Uh, probably 12 sorts, separate waste streams going on down there. And each one of them has to be minded, sometimes more intensely than the others. And at the same time, we have um, someone helping out, as you know, 
um, folks who need to get their bags taken out of the car or something like that. So we have great customer service, but it, it involves, um, you know, having two people on so they can watch uh, the, the customers and also watch the waste streams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that's pretty much it. Um, I must say that we are we make money, made about forty thousand plus in revenue for last fiscal year, and we get grants of about six thousand more or less that come in, and we have um, basically been running this uh, this department on a volunteer basis. I mean, I'm a volunteer. So are the other two people, and it does cost the town very little in terms of personnel and and uh, salary to run this department. So just uh, in sum, I just say it's it's time, given our personnel, and it's not easy to get personnel down there because of the the Saturday and the the Tuesday schedule. Um, it's really a retiree position. And it's, we just went out and um, advertised and we were able to get a one person from Waitley interested after several, several months trying. And uh, hopefully this will work out as a long-term solution, at least three years okay. solution, hopefully. <laughs> well, we hope. Um, do we have any questions for Fran regarding the transfer station? I don't, I don't see any uh, expenses for trash bags, Fran. I see stickers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I see. Trash bags, we pay we pay that out of the RDP. You know, we have another account, the RDP account. And um, we What's sort of RDP? save the um, recycling dividend program. And um, we get a grant every year because Whaley does such a great job and we separate the many waste streams and we get points for each of those. And um, so that allows us to have a little cushion there, but we use it for the stickers, for the bags, which costs, you know, I think $6,000 for the last batch this spring. So it's, it's about that amount of money. Um, Fran, just out of curiosity, and I think we've had this discussion before, mm -hmm. um, why don't you include the revenue stream in the budget so that we can see the offsets? Um, I assume you get these. I I, I don't see the, the revenue stream. I'd ask for it from Dara, and she's, she prints it out. Yeah. I, I, I don't, you know, the budget... I, the grants come in, the grant, the big grants, uh, once a year, and the um, and we get some little monies in from other um, things. We're hopeful that the the trend towards um, the uh, recycling costing less is going to continue, but um, it's still uh, pretty high, and we we pay for recycling now. And that's a that was a big change. Uh, so we, we, the, we so the income we it just gets posted to uh, to a, the solid waste account, the transfer station this version, and uh, uh, every two weeks or once a month, and Dara keeps track of that, and I I ask her for the the income on that. I, I guess we should be able to see that you know, because I'm sure it's a revolving fund that that's in under the transfer station. Um, the last year, mm -hmm. prior years, Brian would always provide us with a list of the revolving funds and mm -hmm. how much is in each of yeah. those funds. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could get that. Um, yeah, I can do it and send it out to you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can give you the amounts, uh, the little email or show that that Dara sent me if you want to look at that in terms of income revenue. Yes, um, that'd be great. 
Um, every, everything good? So everything moving forward is... Yeah, um, you know, awesome. we've been nursing uh, the, the two older guys down there. And it was inevitable that we would not, that we would lose one. And, you know, the other one, like I said, 82, still in good health, but not going to be or want to be around forever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it goes it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a great service. And uh, I think people really appreciate it. It's, uh, we've kept it pretty modest in terms of what it's costing the town. I, I think we once, had a budget of for solid waste of eighty or ninety thousand, but then it was recycling and all that stuff. So, yeah. So they do they do a good job, I think, the people who help out. Yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and the uh, so the request is mainly that ten thousand dollars for an extra person, right? Yeah, a little more, Paul. Uh, a little more. Time. Ten seven. Ten seven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, that's not the budget. You guys don't have the right one. Let's see. It's 15. 15, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 15,957. Yeah. That's the total. That's the total increase. Increase. Mm -hmm. Right. We've got, we're looking okay. at transfer station attendance. Okay. The personnel is a straight up 15,000 personnel. Mm -hmm. Right. Got some old, but yeah, PH three. I got one line for. Uh, for uh, did you get the pack those packets on oh, the back? No, I was oh. reading what we got in the binder. So yeah, we should throw the binder stuff out. So what you yeah. have to do is you have to take these and mm -hmm. replace those with what's here. Nine, there we are. Well then, forget the binder. Oh, okay. Don't get the binder. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I use it for something. Okay. It's, yeah. it's pretty much, as somebody mentioned, 15,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're looking at 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or an additional attendant. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the increase. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So any other thoughts, questions? Um, no. Not, not friend, friend. Oh, I got one. Yeah. Job well done. I Thank you very done. much. All right. Thank you, Fran. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good luck with yeah. the rest. Okay. Have Thank a good you. night. Yeah. See you at the meeting. Yes. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Yes. Hey. All right. Okay. At six twenty, we are five minutes ahead. I just I'm going to bring that to your attention. Um, Yes, very happy. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to town clerk. Watch it. And that is she's here. Uh, Look at that. She is in person. Imagine that. In person. Yeah. 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 What, um, this, my budget is yes. pretty level funded. The only increase really is elections, and that's only because we have the state primaries, the presidential election, and then the local election next year is going to go under this. So on the, I noticed on this budget that you guys received, there you go. it says uh, thirty. Well. 3,700 for election workers. I think I it, sh it should be more than that. It should be five to five. Yeah. I spent three, I spent $1,300 on election workers uh, just with the state primary alone. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to need more than that, especially for the presidential. Yeah. That's the, so the elections is like the only big increase in my budget. The on the election ballots, there's an increase because we have vote by mail. Because we have what? Vote by mail. Oh, vote by mail. The state requires. Okay. Or 
the it costs 88 cents to mail out a ballot. Yep. For the state primaries, I mailed out 135, but for the presidential, I will mail out close to well, 300 roundabouts. So that's an increase. That's an increase. The state is reimbursing towns for some early voting expenses, but that is a reimbursement that I don't get back right away. I don't get that back for a few months. Where? So they do cover some of the early voting stuff they mandate, but we still have to pay out of pocket. So, so where it says election workers, where it says election workers, this should be five thousand. You got thirty-seven, seven, seven. Yeah, and you want five thousand? Exactly. Right. Please. Please, thank you. So you're going to add five months into this? Add more. Than that. 13, Thirteen. 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 Yeah. Okay, we'll get a new um, so we can vote on it. Not tonight, but yeah, I'm still trying to be twelve twenty three. Okay. So that's going to change the bottom line. Any other changes besides that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I said, I just said last, I've never done this before. Yeah. I took last year's. I increased a little for inflation, but not a lot. But this, the biggest, the biggest one is just for elections. Yeah. For state primary. Next year, I'm not going to ask for that big. Because we won't have all these elections. Okay, so that's that. Uh, um, it, it's it'll be comparable to the drop we see from twenty one to twenty two. When you go from a presidential to yes. right. a year. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to take it out of your salary if they no. So you know that. What's so? Uh, what's dog software? Well, that is a software program that we use to track the dog licenses and the tags. We use a third party for that software for the tagging system. And that's taken a jump? Yes. So the, tag, the tags have. I'm sorry? The tags have some sort of sensor in them that allows the dogs to. No, this isn't even the, that, that isn't even the tags. That's just the software program that we use. So that they can keep track of everybody who has a dog. Not oh, where not the dog, the dogs. No, not no. the dog. Yeah. The no. I thought, oh, where, where is that's the oh. <laughs> My dog's got an implant anyway. <laughs> Gosh, I'd get a dog. The, the actual is. tags the actual cost tags 250 good. bucks. Yeah. But the software to keep track of between the tags and postage, <laughs> not everybody comes in to get them in person. So I have to mail some out. Yeah. So we need that software. What did we and do in the old days? We had a list. We right? had a list. And then check. Virginia would print check. me out a list. Print, print the list. These people didn't get their dog license. Right. Go okay. wrestle. Go chase them. There you go. <laughs> and we, we generate enough dog. money and dog licenses to cover the having the licenses. I'm sorry, Do you we make enough money selling licenses to residents for what it costs us to do this process? That is an excellent question. And I do not know. What the revenue was last year. Okay. I can get that to you. Well, can... that will be on. I think there's a the revolving. There is a dog the revolving. Account, you will, right. You'll get that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be able to see that. Okay. Okay. So we'll have a list of all the revolving funds in town. I still want to spend $10 to make it. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. That's all. Hey, do you know how many dogs are in There are approximately 350 dogs. And what are the wow. licenses? And Spader neuter ten. I'm like trying to do the calculation in my head. Spader neuter is ten dollars, and intact is fifteen. So we definitely have more spade than not, and neuter than not. You say we take in about four grand. Yeah, spend them about a thousand. four grand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ballpark. Yeah, that's they're not all licensed. Yeah. No, and they're not all licensed, and then it costs us money to chase it them down. You got to chase them, cost time. Yeah. 
you got to take up the cord that's even trying to avoid that. Oh, yes. Okay. Good. Let's hope that's and there are late fees after June. It's an yeah. extra $50 that residents don't pay by June. So that's a little bit extra revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So that's good. Anyone have any questions for Amy regarding the uh, yeah. budget? Any portion of the budget? Any comments? Well, I think it's, I think you've done a good job. Thanks. Thank you. I've never done this before. Well, <laughs> first time for everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's working. Keep going. Okay. You do a great job on the clerk's office. Yeah. You, you do. You do a great job. Thanks, Julia. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. All right. You're Terrific. welcome. Let me know if you have any other questions. Will do. Yeah. 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 Okay. With 640, we are now. 20 minutes ahead of time. Just want to bring that to everybody's attention. Okay. We will move now to the library. And uh, hold on. The library right there. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you? How are you? Terrific. How's our library doing? Anything wonderful. Yeah. All right. I see you have some musical guests showing up at some point in the not too distant future. Yes. Ukulele. That looks good. It's on Saturday, we're having Julie Stefani come teach ukuleles to children starting about age five all the way up to adults. It's free because it's um, sponsored through a cultural council grant. She does have ukuleles that she's going to bring with her. So. Oh. You don't have to have any prior experience. You don't have to use our ukulele. Just come and learn some simple chords on the ukulele. It'll change your life. Yes. It'll change your life. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not doing that. Let's talk about budget. Okay. All right. Um, so as we see it right here, you're requesting eighty-eight thousand seventy-two dollars for an increase of two thousand five hundred sixty-seven dollars. And coming out to three percent. <clears throat> Won't you just give us a highlight of the uh, areas of increase? And so, one area of increase is going to be our electricity. We are part of the Denigen supply. However, the rate increased from 0.9 cents to 0.14 cents, starting with our February bill for this year. So that is just reflecting. Um, the 14 cent rate increase. And then I, we're asking for an additional, so that was an additional $500 for electricity. Our library is 73 years old. And um, so I'm asking for an additional $600 in maintenance because we have discovered some work that needs to be done to the building. And so we're hoping that we'll be able to have that covered. <laughs> Um, using some of our maintenance funds. And then our only other increase is Comcast because the rate unfortunately did go up. Um, so I was asking for an additional amount there to cover our Comcast for the year. And then I do have our statistics from fiscal year 23. Okay. So we had an annual circulation of 9,677 items come across our circulation desk. Through being a member of the CW Mars Network um, and participating in the Interlibrary Loan Program, we loaned out 2,671 items to other libraries, whereas we only borrowed about 1,500 items from other libraries for our patrons. So that means that our patrons are finding the library materials that they're looking for in their home library, which is Wheatley, and other patrons from other libraries are finding materials that we have that they would like to borrow. Um, 388 of Wheatley are registered patrons, and we had a total of 2,694 patron visits during fiscal year. Did you say 388 residents of Wheatley? Yes. 
How, how have those numbers changed over the last We've several actually, years, the number of people who use the library? Well, we, it started to come back up now that we're out of pre-COVID. We did unfortunately take a hit during the COVID and then oh, a couple sure. of years afterwards, but a lot of our long-term patients who used to come in then stopped coming in or starting to feel more comfortable and are starting to come in again. Any other questions? They, uh, are you done? Are you, are you, uh, how many hours a week are you open? We're open 26 hours a week. 26 hours a week. And there's two people on it all the time. So you no. Might, no. There's a little bit of crossover, okay. but usually from about four or five o'clock and uh, on Mondays are open 10 to five. Yeah. So on Mondays, yes, there are two people on staff. Okay. Um, for about 10 to 5. And then Tuesdays and Wednesdays are open 1 to 8. From 3 o'clock until about 5 o'clock on Tuesdays, there are two staff members there. Okay. On Wednesdays, it's just I would be there. And then when I leave, Kim comes in at 4 and she would be there by herself. And then on Saturdays, unless we have an event at the library, then there's just one person on staff. So there is a little bit of crossover, but there are times when staff are there by themselves. Are these events things that you and your assistant are putting on or are these outside groups coming? They're mostly events that are planned through the library that we are putting on. Okay. There is a concert coming up in June okay. that they're just, it's the group is using the library space, but it's okay. not anything the library is actually putting on. Okay. I just see lots of like programs, other libraries that I don't see in the Wake library. We guys didn't have COVID glasses or something. For those, we're slowly, I've done a big thing about that. There's lots of programs to get kids in, like school vacation weeks and right, stuff. But we don't slowly, do that way. Today. We're slowly building that up. We okay. do have on Monday mornings. We have Get it Ryan to um, coordinating with the Union Thirty Eight Family Network. She comes in on Monday mornings okay. and does Monday morning music and movement for preschoolers. Yep. We're having Julie come in. I've got summer reading pretty well planned out. There's okay. an event I'm just waiting to get a date on. Um, so we are slowly building our programming back up. Do you guys do the website or someone else do it? We do it. You do it, okay. Just, uh, I think in past years, um, if you attached to the budget, what the numbers that you just read off, and, I can make a copy um, and pass it out. So it, it's just that, you know, we don't vote on this this evening. Okay. We will wait for another meeting and we'll go through each of the budgets and make a decision as to whether it's fully funded or partially funded uh, based on the needs of town. Okay. Okay. So um, I don't think there's any issue. It's no. just that when we start to talk about it, we go, hey, look. We got almost 400 residents taking part in the library. Hey, we've got 9,000 books going to and from. Mm -hmm. You know, so all of those things make make it a little easier when we start to reflect back to the budget itself. So just because okay, you make a country that that helps. Okay. Well, uh, because your salary line item is level funded, I'm assuming you're there's no coal in it. Because I they do, just voted. Right. So yeah. usually I don't do that. And yeah. then when and if the poll is decided, the town administrator has you just done, figures it out. Figure that out. And then yep. after <laughs> July 1st, I get an email saying these are the new pay rates for staff. Yeah. Let me pass them down. That's a good Thank you. Yeah. Great. All right. Yep. Much appreciated. Uh, so that's one just a question. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, capital request for ceiling exterior bricks. Okay. What's for sixty five hundred? Oh, I I don't. Oh, Brian must put that under capital request. Initially, we tried to get 
um, CPA funds for that. Yeah. They said it was um, typical maintenance. We have we formed a subcommittee, uh, maintenance subcommittee last year, and we did a um, inch by inch analysis of the outside and the inside of the building. And we made a we have a 15 page spreadsheet of things that we need to look at. Yeah. And our our mason, um, we noticed cracks in certain places, and our mason said that we need to deal with those cracks. Yeah. And when we deal with the cracks, then we should seal the building because when it was sandblasted, it took some of the surface off the bricks, so the bricks are much more porous than they should be. And it's 73 years old, and the sandblasting was done in, I don't know, 1980, 70, you know, 80, yeah. something like that. Um, so we're trying to, yeah. we'll get the cracks fixed first, and then we'll try to seal the, um, sure. the bricks. It's a double application. They do it once, and then they do it again. Yeah. Um, because we thought that was pretty important to do. So that we, yeah, uh, I would think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. yeah. I just, as long as you're here, I will. Sure. Yeah. yeah, no, that's well, we're, we're, right. we're going to need to replace the roof over the roof. Yeah. Yeah. When does that happen? Um, as soon as we figure out, we've got a, a, a project that was approved last year by town meeting. Then we have to do, uh, we're repointing the chimneys up, uh, up above. When we get all that work done, we're walking across that then we we already have an estimate for um, the roof repair for Florence roofing and it, we're going to uh, need some work on the gutters when we do that we're trying um, to look along and make sure that we do a little bit at a time um, and we're working on that then when when you've got the, your maintenance committee works out your calendar to make sure to be able to be administrative we'll plug it into our long term yeah. capital oh, okay. request okay Yep. Yeah. Bob, Bob Swingers this year. That's so bad. I mean, it's good about that. Say, so, um, when you went to CPA, so CPA said that the bricks were maintenance. Right. You're asking, maintenance. what if we replaced all the bricks? Would they pony up? Would they pay for that? You know, Paul, I, mean, I, I didn't ask him that. Huh? Um, basically, <laughs> Alan told me that um, when he looked at the application, yeah. that it, it wasn't going to fly, and then the historic commission said it was um, routine maintenance. So mm -hmm. the the issue was with how long the the ceiling lasts. Yeah, that we would have to do it again in a decade or so. So um, they felt that was routine maintenance. Well, it's wonderful that you're staying on top of it. It's a, it's a jewel <laughs> town. And, and it needs to be taken care of. Kept as such. So. Yeah. What else do you have? You and Bob Clayton are doing a fantastic job in that building, working after this stuff as well. We couldn't have done without your dad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any any, any of, further questions? Lots of years have neglected and put off maintenance in that building. It's fine. I know. We do ahead. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We are going to move right now to uh, the next, which is our uh, SCEMS budget, which and I want to just uh, note that we are now 25 minutes ahead of schedule. That's, that's uh, nice. for, all those, for all those counting, keep on running. He's moving. He doesn't know that. Okay, here it is, right here. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, Oh, we're, we're waiting with it. Now let's actually keep going. And you'll see uh you'll see oh, yeah. all the detail that you want. Oh yeah. I don't remember this for that. Okay, so we have a new individual who is heading up the scams. Uh let's introduce ourselves, okay. Um Paul Antea, Finance Committee, Waitley. Uh Tom Maher, Finance Committee. Judy Ross, Finance Committee. Fred Barron, select board, we know. We, we've met. He knows me. Fred Norton, finance committee. Dennis Kennedy, finance. Jim Kirkendall, finance. Paul Newman, finance. And you are? Joshua Sparks, chief of South County. Nice All to right. Meet you. Joshua? Uh, I hope to continue this of uh, finishing early. But... <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. This year, uh, we are requesting a increase. Uh, 
still we're looking at a roughly 20% uh, increase. Uh, this primarily reflects uh, last year there not being any remainder in this place into the budget this year. Uh, that Before you go any farther, let's make sure we're all on the same page. We've had a revision. There's okay. two pages there. So I'm looking at total of um, no. <laughs> oh, I'm stop looking stop. at a total of 444368 for your for the department um, with um, an increase of $97,470 for a 28.10% percent increase. Correct. Oh, okay, so we're on the same page. With a weekly assessment at 143.90. Correct. Yep. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Well, so basically, we didn't have any retained earnings placed into the budget this year because of equipment purchases last year. Mm -hmm. uh, my predecessor felt at the time that that was uh, the right avenue, and uh, I'm grateful to have the equipment, no doubt about that. Um, but it does impact this year's budget. Okay. On top of that, this reflects a uh, salary increase, a step raise, uh, in addition to a 2% COLA increase for. All of our employees, we're not adding uh, additional person. Um, and it also reflects the increase in call volume that we're currently seeing. So, so is that the increase in call volume is what we're currently seeing. Uh, the downside of the increase in call volume is that uh, the ambulance is being utilized much more. Sure. Uh, the upside to that is the ambulance is being utilized. <clears throat> so uh, you want all of those uh, things out of that, uh, but it certainly does increase um, ambulance receipts. So when you say increase in call volume, can you put any, can you wrap any numbers around that? Sure. So uh, we did roughly 1468 calls uh, for the uh, previous fiscal year. Uh, we're, we're expected to surpass that um, very quickly. Uh, so what I did was for this budget, I have to um, <clears throat> acknowledge that, uh, you know, I just started in the beginning of February. So uh, this budget was largely well prepared for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I have okay. gone in and I'm very happy to have reduced what was handed to me. Uh, by close to 30 percent. Um, but you know, ultimately uh, I have that luxury of saying this with as I go with my budget. Uh, I will be able to say it again next year, uh, sad to say. So uh, I do feel comfortable that we can uh, very conservatively put eight hundred thousand dollars in minimum service fees um, towards uh, the total expenses were already uh, on track to overtake that, just moving into the fourth quarter. So you're moving towards that on an annual basis, 800000 I think that's a conservative number. Okay. Uh, <coughs> for ambulance receipts going back to the right? Um, so uh, that's the good news. Yeah. Right. So has insurance in increased for your, um, for your invoices for what? Not really. The insurance has uh, stayed the same, yeah. which is great. Uh, you know, most of the insurance that uh, just involve the vehicles and personnel. Did, did you add a vehicle? I see a huge jump in fuel from 12 to 18,000. Well, uh, fuel prices do fluctuate, but no. Uh, there's just the increase in use of our SUV okay. as we respond to more vehicles. Okay. Well, Fred, you're on the booth. Yeah. What's what's the booth think of the the budget? The booth mostly wanted to find out what the finance committee thought of the budget. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're going to pass the buck oh, around here. Oh, oh. I, 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 I did want to ask, Captain, uh, what do you anticipate the impact on revenues to be of the increased call volume? Uh, well, it should hopefully make my Eight hundred thousand dollar annual service fees estimate. Uh, well, uh, yeah. so that's <laughs> good. Uh, increase on volume, of course. Uh, that means we make more money, right? right. So, uh, 
Are, are, are you seeing more volume because people are sicker in our towns or something? Uh, it's a mix of both, okay. for sure. Although the mutual aid numbers haven't really increased dramatically, but, uh, it's my personal hope that they do uh, because that's revenue that capture that can subsidize our system. Yeah, we're in a really good <clears throat> position right now uh, as a system. Uh, and now uh, we're meeting our call demand uh, by and large. Yeah. We have yeah. very many calls away to our mutual aid uh, yeah. responders. So what, what's the uh, what's the average cost per ride? That is a loaded question, sir. All right. Yeah. Unloaded. Yeah. Where are you going? From where to where? So well, it depends where and what can be an average. So uh, medical building a helicopter or are you going by the well, so, helicopter? I would yeah. like to take it. Medical billing is uh, a bit weird. It's not uh, like production. Uh, it's actually really difficult to determine cost because the cost is very different based on each call. The mm -hmm. way that medical Billing is done is based off of uh, CMS reimbursement schedules. Uh, and uh, there was a fantastic uh, Office of the Attorney General's uh, report on ambulance billing in Massachusetts, uh, just published his last uh, audit. It's really worth your time uh, about how all of that works. But essentially, a call may cost me. Six hundred dollars. A call may cost me six thousand mm -hmm. dollars, depending on what equipment we use, the distance we travel, chart, what procedures uh, we employ, and who is on the truck. Um, that being said, we don't always recoup anywhere near that cost. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, those uh, rates established by CMS are fixed. Uh, and they're based off of mileage and off of sort of procedures. So, you know, realistically, I could expect that some calls that I get in reimbursed uh, six hundred dollars when maybe the call cost me like four thousand dollars, and in other cases, I'm going to get reimbursed twenty two hundred dollars for a call that cost me very little. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's really designed to favor the insurance. Court, uh, the insurance is who benefits. Yeah. Uh, we don't benefit, the patient doesn't benefit from the hospital. But, so it really is a loaded question. We can talk about it all night. No, that's okay. But we are 25 yeah. minutes ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I think we've slipped to about 18. No. But um, just just uh, as just from a, a roundabout view, you know you're on track to make 800k somewhere. You know your expenses are under five, so you're looking at somewhere three three fifty in the black. I'm thinking ish ish. Okay, so now you have you have your income, you have your costs. You know how many calls you make. You can figure out what the average cost. Her call is. I'm. I'm not doing it here. I'm just <laughs> saying that it's it's more than feasible to come up with that number. But the real question I have is, where do you see the um, that three fifty going next year? I'm hoping. Uh, so yes, you can average the costs out uh, over the annual call for sure. Uh, but it's not really reflective of the cost of operation. No, absolutely. Two, two calls could, could throw that average out by $2,000. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Um, we can still come up with a number. Oh, yeah. yeah, I, yeah we can give you a number if you want a number. But uh, you know what do the number mean? Um, so uh, I am hopeful that we can increase our service volume over the next several years. Uh, so that we can drive these numbers down. Thank you. I, I've got one question. Yeah. Uh, they do authorize last year to send a lot of, well, to write off some old bit bills that were never collected and to send some of the collection. Has there been any impact on revenue? Yeah, so we have the option through our billing agency, Comstar, uh, 
to send unpaid ambulance bills to collections. Uh, I'm not certain how long South County is employed to practice. Uh, my experience, we, and we, I think we just did it last year. But it was good. Yeah. Uh, my experience in other communities is that uh, the reimbursement is actually quite little on those. In fact, at the Google uh, meeting next Thursday, I'm going to come out and get more write offs for that. Uh, okay. So, uh, for things to, uh, you know, most of the time we write off a bill if there's a limit on a statute of limitations or the person is deceased or they're in bankruptcy or things like that. There's just no feasible way to collect on this bill, right? I'm also, there's no way on earth I'm going to chase down somebody on Medicare. Uh, or we're going to be that cost. That, that, that's, that's just a, a line I will open on the string. So that's where the. You know, while you're here, I, I, I think there are probably a number of people watching this, and they probably don't go to the station and ask you these questions. But, but how are we, uh, um, you know, how's the service? How's the, how are we protected um, as a town? Um, with the ambulance service, do we have enough EMS? That whole end of it. Better than you ever. Okay. Uh, but certainly not overhead. Uh, I feel it's appropriate. Uh, I'm hoping that it becomes not enough over the next several years. Um, but that would be hopefully uh, paid for by its own version. Uh, I'm so uh, walking into this job, I'm a little proud of the organization. Growth to lead it. But it is a wonderful group of people. Uh, they're very dedicated. Our staffing is 24 7. We need to keep very promptly on the target. This is the service that you're okay to them, is the service that you're okay to on behalf of the Board of Oversight, I would second that. I think we are very proud of the what we've put together over the last 10 years in building this organization. The response to that. Good to know. Good to know. Appreciate it. Thank you for all your hard work and uh, your day to day activity, too. Thanks. Any other questions? I think we're good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, we are at, we are at um, 10 of 27, which makes us still 25 minutes ahead, but just of the police coming? I mean, oh, they go to 27. The the they're going to run in 7 12. We're going to be out of here. Oh, shit. gosh. They're all going to spin and we're leaving the door. <laughs> Well, let's take a hard look at it then, just so that. Uh, so I don't do the. What do you want to do? One? Agricultural. Is there somebody here? Um, I don't think. I think it's Doug coming from agriculture or somebody. He did confirm, but he probably won't be here until the scheduled time. Yeah. Right. I, 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 um, is the personnel committee going to? The personnel committee is me. And Brenda's here to okay. So well, we let's do that if you like. let's jump yeah, ahead two spaces. Around. Yeah. Well, well, I assume that's the two of you. One of the two of you, not who sent the memos and got oh. sent out. My, that was my memo. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have this for the person up for the is cost a, of living adjustment. Yes, there yeah. is oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes, the early bird does get the word. Yeah, so. I get the book. Nobody else here? No. Right. Who are in? Right. 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 It's been pretty quiet up to this point. Really? Nobody else is. Yeah. Oh, 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 o
Here it is in its finest. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready to discuss? Uh, you want to take five? Or... I just want to make sure I got the right, the right sheet in front of me. That's fine. Yeah, not the one that. Just so, just so we're on the same page, yeah. And that we, uh, um, <clears throat> you are requesting two hundred sixty-six thousand five hundred fifty-eight dollars. For a um, an increase of three thousand five hundred seventy nine dollars, which is a percent change of one point three six. Does that sound right? I have a slightly different number. Yeah, what do you have? Mine's mine is sixty four eight sixty eight. That's the total increase. What's the data? Okay, we're working with two two twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. We got 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. I got 20. 20. I have this printed this. So it's dated for Yeah, that's what I got too. Yeah. Right oh, yeah, yeah. Five, six, 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 I'm not sure what people that would That's, yeah, that'll be the 2%. Oh, that's what we'll get. Okay. All right. So it's the 266. Okay. What was the number again? 266. What's in your five, five, eight, yeah. five, eight. So yeah. there's no update. No, we're no, good. We're good. Okay. What, what do you have? Two sixty six five five eight. Right there. Okay. So we're still at that number, Trish. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. But you no other have... increases that are added. You should that. also talk about the team maintenance for this year too. Yeah. The 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 yeah. That doesn't come out of my budget. Okay, that's right. That's our keys. That's right. Yeah. That's fine. That's in the fuel. Yeah, yeah. Separate, so Highway we have does separate. Highway department does the fuel for the whole town. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, just yeah. I know. Yeah. True enough. Okay. So then we are at that number. Yes. Yeah. Six five five eight. Yeah. Um, Thirty-five seventy-nine increase for one point three six. Yeah. So there's, there's not <clears throat> there's not much there. No no large numbers. Um, the heat. I added a little bit for that because we're we're dancing right on the line. Yep. So anticipating that it could go a little bit higher. Um, dues have <laughs> gone up. Um, those continually go up because we have there's six or seven different organizations that we pay dues for. So they you know one will go up fifty dollars, one will go up twenty five. Right. So they all seem to go up a little bit each year. So they all together getting added so that's the reason for that increase um, software fees maintenance fees with the uh, communications equipment and record management system I mean, those are what's mgt card Cell phone and MGT car. Mobile data terminal, those are the computers and the cruisers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we don't really, we don't have a cell phone. It's the cell phone slash MDT because it shows up from Verizon as a cell phone number, but it's it's really the air card yeah. for our mobile data terminals. So it's not really a cell phone. We don't have cell phones on the car. Just the, we're not we're not paying for your cell phones. No, no, not at all. <clears throat> Um, so on here you have um, subtotal personnel for an increase of two one three nine. Um, now obviously coal is not in here yet, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, so what's the excuse me, Jim? Um, just the chief's contractual increase for everybody else. Um, okay. It's not in there yet. Okay. So, well worth the money. It's the chief. So that's why there's there's not a similar percent increase for the other two. That's correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 
So the increase in overtime is over ten hour increase for the full time officers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we didn't we didn't really know because we've never really paid overtime for full time officers. Um, we've always done it as comp time. When Don was here, he chose to take it as comp time. We never really had to pay out overtime. Um, so we had the minimal amount of money for overtime per per officer. Um, so it looked like that was going to need to go up a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, just for general general purposes. Um, it's it's not it wasn't really a comparison to compare what what Don had for overtime to what what they're going to have for overtime because he had different responsibilities and some of his overtime was for other reasons. Other mm -hmm. like he would he would go to court or he would you know, do um, court hearings for me or he would do different things that. That our current officers may not be may not be doing so. Mm -hmm. It's not as it's not as much in overtime as what what he was getting for comp time, um, but it was just a, a kind of a, a general number that I divided between the two of them. So we're just looking to bump that up a little bit. So right now, just give give us a sense of the uh, Manning in the department number wise. You have full time, part time. Give us. So yeah. people at home can hear this. Okay. Right? Yeah. So we have, so I'm obviously full time. In addition to myself, we have two other full time positions, uh, police officer positions. One of those works <laughs> during the day, during the week. So we overlap for three shifts during the week. So they work, both of our full time officers work a Sunday through Thursday shift. And then they have Friday and Saturday off. So then they come back on the Sunday. Um, so I work the Friday, Tuesday through Friday. So before I had Mondays off, now we've switched. So they're doing the Sunday shift. So we kind of everybody's schedule kind of switched around a little bit. So now I work Fridays instead of um, instead of I work Fridays instead of the Monday, essentially. So we're covering, still covering. Two shifts a day, seven days a week. Right now, we're covering three, on average, three shifts a week with part-time officers. Um, that's that's getting more difficult, which we've been discussing for the last three years with the whole uh, post and bridge training and yeah. requiring all officers that same standard of training across the board. <laughs> the problem with that, <clears throat> what most departments are running into and what we're starting to see a little bit of is officers that are that went through the bridge training that are now certified as officers which is only one level of certification it is no longer part-time and full-time yep. it's one level of certification so they had to they had to undergo an additional 200 hours of training in order to get to that level so what what happens now is all of those part-time officers that now became essentially certified full-time officers are taking full-time officer positions in towns elsewhere so there's no longer a part-time academy. So the only way to really replenish part-time officers is to send somebody to the full-time academy. It's the only way we can bring somebody in. And unless we brought them in from somewhere else, if they're working for another town, they want to work part-time. Um, the problem is, is it's getting very competitive out there. It's, it's kind of like business. You know, there's not so much in, I think the jail is the only one offering um, sign-on bonuses. But, not necessarily law enforcement or police, it's just for the jail, but there's departments that are offering sign-on bonuses, they're ridiculous pays, so a lot of officers are getting lost because they're just lateral transferring to some of these some of these departments. Okay. In Franklin County, it's it's an issue. Greenfields, they, mm -hmm. they've had some issues with um, people that they've lost, positions changing, people getting promoted, so they've got a lot of openings, so they're just taking everybody from anywhere that they can find them right to fill those positions but we're gonna eventually run into the same type of situation right now we have um in addition to the full-time officers we have six part-time officers uh, but not all six of those part-time officers are working like on a regular basis some of them work once a month some of them work once every couple months mm -hmm. we have one or two that'll take two or three shifts so it's it's getting harder and harder to get people to work yep. to fill those those three shifts, just the three shifts that we have each week. So who knows what's going to happen down the road if, if we start losing part time officers? If we've got nobody to work part time shifts, and we've got all those those weekend shifts the, open, uh, who knows what's going to happen? 
does a town like Waitley um, become somewhat attractive to um, a new police officer as compared to running, you know, down the Springfield? Absolutely not. No? I, honestly, it's it's not so much the job itself. This is the same job no matter where you go. It's it's the pay. As an example, what, uh, Wilbraham's hiring right now. Full-time officers straight in the door, 70000 a year to start with a $10,000 sign-in bonus. We, we can't compete with that. Our officers aren't even making fifty two grand a year, our full-time officers. So they're... They're starting at eighteen thousand dollars more. Departments around us, we're we're one of the we're one of the lower ones, and it just keeps getting lower and lower as departments keep bumping up to be more competitive. Yeah, um, we're, we're running into the same same situation. Towns around us, I mean, Deerfield, Sunderland, I mean, Hatfield's at twenty eight dollars an hour. We're not even at twenty five, so it's it's kind of hard in that in that sense. Um, looking at the salary survey, which I'm sure you guys have seen. <laughs> I think we should just throw that thing out the window. In, in my opinion, it's just there's there's no there's no valid way to make a comparison with with that salary survey that that we use. It's not a fair representation. It's not an accurate representation of what's what's being presented. As an example, our full time officers looking at their pay where they fall in the median. Um, if you look at Conway Police, Conway Police has. Forty-nine thousand for their full-time position. They don't have a full-time position. That's just adding up all the part-time off hours they have available for the year. So if they don't even have a part-time or a full-time position um, on the salary survey, you'll notice that there's there's no the town listed for for hourly wages for their part-time officers. So how how are we really comparing anything when we don't have numbers for for part-time officers? Sure. So it's really. It's really, and I'm not blaming any individual. I just think the process of it, we have talked about it for years in the past. Everybody is aware of the issues that, that we've had with these salary services. The salary, sure. So, um, but, can you speak to the workload? Um, how, you know, how, how many you know, moving violations do we have this year versus last year? How many, um, you know? Off the top of my head, I, I just, I, I can tell you that it's up. I can't I can't tell you the numbers off the top of my yeah, head for yeah. sure. Um, I know just having somebody else during the day with me doing the majority of the stuff that I'm doing administratively and going to some calls. Um, we have an officer that's during the day for those three days a week that's just doing traffic enforcement. Mm -hmm. when, he's, when he's not on a call, he's out doing traffic enforcement. Yeah. So we're getting much more traffic enforcement during the day than we yeah. have in the past. Um, on the weekends, that's essentially what they're what they're doing. So the numbers are definitely up as far as traffic enforcement. Do we have a misdemeanor count versus felony count for a given time frame? Not off, not off the top of my head. No, I, I couldn't get any the accurate okay. information. We do have a lot of other things going on. Yeah, we have the we talked about it a little bit. I think last year we were kind of prepping, getting ready for it, but we have a, a clinician that's hired by CSO, which is Clinical Support Options in Greenfield. It's on a grant. So we're sharing that clinician with Sunderland and Hatfield. So Sunderland, Hatfield, and Waitley, we have a regional clinician. They go out one day a week with us currently. We're looking at July 1st, starting that person in a full-time role because the numbers are so high that we're looking at a full-time role. So that clinician, when, if, as an example, if I'm with them on Wednesday, we would go to any calls in Waitley, Sunderland, or Hatfield. So they respond, and that doesn't get paid out of the town budget. That gets paid from grant funding from the CSO grant. So, but that's additional calls that we're going to, additional follow-up things, additional things that are getting um, actively created as opposed to waiting for something to happen. So those are more proactive things than and just waiting for somebody to go into a mental health crisis. Or a small enough town where we know people that are, are, are having issues, having problems, so we can try to admit that in the bud beforehand, so we go in and follow us with them, outreach to them uh, beforehand. So that's that's adding more volume to what we're, what we're doing um, from that perspective, having much more involvement with the community. Um, but as far as the actual numbers, I mean, I could get you actual numbers. We, no, we have that, but... It, I don't have the 
the breakdown of the, the numbers. Things are definitely busy. just get a sense of how protected we, we are. Yeah, so things, things are definitely time. busier. We have much, I don't want to say much better protection, but we've got there's there's less time where like in the past we talked about me going to a meeting and not being in town. Mm -hmm. We always have somebody yeah. in town now, so that's that's kind of the, the key thing being available sure. for those calls. Okay. Okay. okay, so now you have Mondays off. Yes. So you're working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yes. Four 10 hour days. Yep. All right. And um, just, I've got, one, go ahead. once again, capital. You've got a uh, request to replace the unlocked filter. <coughs> yes. Um, you, what do you anticipate that to be? Gasoline, hybrid, electric? Well, I guess it depends on the time frame. Um, so the the unmarked cruiser that we currently have, that's got 65,000 miles, 2017. It's a cruiser I primarily use. Um, with adding the full-time position, adding these clinician um, shifts that are, that are out there, we've been running into issues with having a car available um, to be able to to really do these shifts. Um, so I'm looking, the, the, the cruiser in 2017 was up for replacement this year. I'm looking to use the money that we're gonna use to replace that to actually purchase a car and keep the 2017 car. We can still get another couple of years, two, three years out of that. Um, again, it's primarily used by me. I take really good care of it. I don't abuse it. I don't use it <laughs> um, like the other cars are getting used. Yeah. So. If we replace that car or purchase a new car this year, it's a time crunch because right now, the on the state contract, the dealer that we use only has a few cars. I think he said they had five or six of the same car that we just purchased, the hybrid. Yeah. Um, if we wait and those cars are gone, they've already pulled back the 2024 hybrid orders. They're not making any 2024 hybrids. And we won't know until December whether they're going to make 2025. I'm being told by the manufacturer that they're going to say that 2025 are going to roll out at this time, but then they're going to pull that back as well. The factory that they have to make the hybrids is only making gas gas cruisers right now. They're only making the, the utility vehicle mm -hmm. and gas. They're mm -hmm. not making hybrid cruisers. So if we want a hybrid cruiser, then we're going to have to look at doing something soon, sooner rather than later. So you see the the oh, well, well, go ahead. No, the the vehicle that you're talking about keeping in 2017 has 65,000 miles on currently, it. Currently, yes. No? Yep. Okay, and that's, that's gas. And you're going to hang on to that. Yes. And we and bring in something else, whether it's the same car that we just got the hybrid utility. Yeah. Same. Car. Okay. So you're replacing yeah. an older marked unit. No, nope. this this was adding, adding a third car. Yeah. So if you drive by the station now, you're going to look out there and you're going to see a bunch of cruisers. Yeah. yeah. So, so right now that the uh, so I'll give I'll give it to you in number. So my car, the one that I call my car, 2017, that's cruiser one. Cruiser two is the 2018. That's the oldest the oldest utility, yeah. and the newest one that we have is cruiser three. Yeah. So those are the three cars. We also have the sedan that's out there that's strictly a detail car. Yep. True. We don't anytime that gets used, we get paid for it. Yeah. That doesn't move unless we're getting paid for that car. We get ten dollars an hour to use that car for details. So that car right now is the detail car, detail car only. We sank, and I didn't know if it was gonna come up tonight, but right now I'm currently forty two hundred dollars over budget for the for the cruiser because we had to put in a water pump which was 30 i think it was 3800 dollars to put a water pump into that uh, that two car which is one the older of the, the utility vehicles um so what what i would like to do is adding that new hybrid so we would have cruiser one would still be my car cruiser two would be the new hybrid cruiser three is the hybrid that we currently have and then the oldest utility that we have would become the detail car and we would trade the sedan in or get rid of it, sell the sedan, trade it in, get rid of it. So the only time that old the old utility would get used is for a detail or if we're getting paid for it, 
or somebody needed to take it for training or anything like that, mm -hmm. we keep the mileage down mm -hmm. on the other front line cars. That's the whole objective is to keep the keep the mileage and the and the usage down on those cars so to stretch out the life as long as we can. So we would essentially be adding one car to the fleet, if you will. So we would have three frontline cars and one detail car. We'd still keep that. Okay. It'd be even if if we sat here right now and said, okay, you can you you know you can order a cruiser. Mm -hmm. We you can't do anything till July first. Correct. And Correct. you say there's only five left. By yeah. July first, they're going to be gone. Possibly, but I, this is this is the discussions that I've had with the salesperson is they have these five cars, they could go like that. They could go tomorrow. But if I say that everybody's on board to get one, they could set one aside for me. If the town votes and says, no, we're not gonna do this, they put it back on the line and sell it in there. So I've already had that discussion with them. I can't I can't put a down payment on it because we don't have the money. I can't order it because it we don't work have like that. It doesn't work like that. But you know, just talking with the salesman, because there's not too many departments that have the same color car that we have. If you wanted a black and white car, there's yeah. When there's you say there's only five on the lot, there's five only there five are. gray ones. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So you could you could we could get a black and white one, right? And then pay six thousand dollars to have it painted. Yeah. And then we could. I mean, it's going to cost seventy thousand instead of yeah. sixty three thousand. But so so yeah. Just to to clarify, they they have five that are. Yeah, are the color of the one that we just we just purchased. So, yeah. And those those could go. Anytime, um, state police. The half of the cars that they've ordered for the state police are all gas now because they're not making they're, they're not, not making, making hybrids. Are they not making them because they're not reliable or because they just drive gas? You know what? I I don't I don't think the reliability is a, as big of an issue. I think it's the the demand and with the factory that they have to build the hybrids, they're only making gas. Because the demand is so high for the for the gas ones, they just they don't have enough time, effort, parts to make the hybrid because they're just so far behind. On is it a significant uh, savings gas. to jump on the hybrid now versus getting a gas later? Savings as far as purchasing it, yeah, dollars. Um, gas is going to be cheaper to purchase, okay. much cheaper for. I think I think when we did the hybrid. Uh, I want to say it was eight, eight or nine thousand cheaper, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Um, the gas would have been cheaper. Yeah. Gas would have been cheaper to purchase. Um, that wasn't an option from the select board's perspective. The discussions I have with the select board, they were leaning towards electric. Electric options weren't available, no. so we kind of settled for the the hybrid model. Gas wasn't mm -hmm. really an option at, at that point, and we may not have the choice if, if we if we wait too long. Gas may be the only option. So it'd be a little bit cheaper. Um, we've been running the hybrid for, let's say, a couple months now, a month and a half, two months now. And we've seen a significant um, change in the fuel usage. Um, we're at our old, the old car, anywhere between 11 and 12 miles per gallon. The new car, we're looking at 21, 22 miles per gallon right now. Who knows as as the car gets older, maybe that'll drop down. Yeah. I'm not sure how it how it'll play out long term, that's but it is a significant that's a little bit sitting. So you guys have a lot of sitting. I not I think like, oh, yeah. hours. So when, when hours, we're, it's not much. so when the officers are sitting on the side of the road, yeah. it's really weird, it's still an adjustment, but when you're sitting on the side of the road, it's not running. Yeah. You know, it just sits there. If it needs to charge up a little bit because you're running the radar and you're running the computer, then it'll kick on. Or when you put it in drive and take off, it'll it'll kick on. It the, automatic. You don't have to turn the key and start the thing back up. Again. Nope, you don't have to do anything. That's good. So if it needs if it needs power, the engine will kick on to charge the batteries. <laughs> if the batteries are charged up, it'll shut the engine. So it is it is kind of neat. It's a little bit of an adjustment. That it runs different when you step on the gas. It like does. if you if you drop it in a drive to take off after somebody, there's a delay. Because you gotta wait for the engine to kick on. It's all electronic now. So Hold on, I'll get on the gas. <laughs> yeah. If the car's going 100 miles an hour, you're not, you're not, get, you're not catching up to it. Yeah. Yeah, you're not catching up to well, it. Well, I mean, it's it's seconds. It's not. It's just a little bit of an adjustment. Yeah. It's not, it's I, I know how they work. But, but yeah. we've got Joyce on. She's got some comments, but we just need to clarify. I think she means maintenance. 
She said cost of ownership of the hybrids are better. Long term, yes. Long term is lower maintenance costs. Yeah, lower maintenance costs. Yeah. 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 For more upfront, but remains to be seen. Same. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've, I've heard from other departments they've seen savings, but I've heard from other, other departments that they didn't really see much savings. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to see with our usage on our car. <laughs> All right. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, law enforcement is local. Um, anybody have any questions about the budget that was um, that we haven't touched upon that you'd like to? I did have one other, if there's no other question, I did have one other thing to, to bring up. I sent the, the letter in. It. It's not really a, I guess it's a budget item. It's yeah. not really a budget item, but I'm not looking for any more money. Um, so we've had training money that the town has paid forward. So each year there's money that goes into a training account to pay for our officers, our part-time officers, to go through the training to get them certified. Yeah. Uh, it turns out some of those officers got trained by their other department, or we got reimbursements from the state for training. So we haven't had to spend all that money. We haven't had to spend all that training money. Yeah. I'm looking at this as a as a, an opportunity to possibly reallocate some of that money, which in the letter that I sent is about ten thousand dollars, reallocating that money so we can replace the the current um guns that we have in our armory. So we have the 10 handguns and we have <clears throat> two rifles, two mm -hmm. patrol rifles for the okay. Those are, the, the rifles are over 20 years old and then the handguns are pushing 20 years old. And that's 20 years of, I mean, it's not getting used day to day in shootouts, but which is not a lot. There's a lot of rounds that have gone through those guns. Okay. All the officers training with those guns and the thousands of rounds that we yeah. go through them each year. Have you had any firearm discharges in this past year in the field? No. Okay. It, it like that, other, other than putting down an ant. Okay. The, the firearm should be a capital request rather yeah. than operation yeah. of transfer. Like, what, what, what he wants to do want is transfer. transfer. Well, I, I know, but it, it should be the capital expenditure rather than out of operation. So, so you just want to transfer a capital expenditure? One capital, an operational expenditure to make it capital. Because the training is in the operating budget. Well, is it, he would basically have to, to simplify it. Mm -hmm. He's right. got to take the 10000 put it back into the gen, into right. free cash, right. and then we're going to turn around and take it out of free cash and give it to him to buy guns. Does it, right? it, does it have to happen that way? Does it's it its own separate it have to go to capital if he's got the money. The, if he's requesting the money. Yeah, then it's got to go on cap. Right. But he's got the his money in his budget, so if it's all right with the select board, it shouldn't be part of the No reason okay. it shouldn't transfer. You're probably right there, Dan. It's capital item. He already has it. Needs it. To have to go to the capital planning committee under the process that every other department, unfortunately, the chief has to use and then come to the select board and the process established. Okay. I understand. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not sure of the process because the money's already there. So basically, he's got to give it back and right. then we turn around. And give I mean, that's 5000 this time. You don't have to send it back. <clears throat> so it looks like it's between you and you the count. select board. <laughs> okay. And Trish. And Trish. <laughs> it was another, another submittal that I had. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to put it out on the table. Yeah. I mean, if we can, yeah. we can work it out however procedurally it has to work out. Okay. I was, I was told that's fair enough. when Brian was here, I was told that it's just it's a reallocation of funds that we already yeah. have. Yeah. So that's that's all I was going on. How Thank much you. A replacement gun costs? It's a. Well, for one gun, it's six hundred and fifty dollars per gun. Per handgun. Yeah. That's a good yeah, ten of them. Sixty five hundred. Five yeah. grand. And then we got the right yeah. hand. See, see they're reading the rules, five grand for capital. Yeah, yeah, if that's if that's if the case. Look at yeah. that. He could transfer that, the money. That's only the first part though. Yeah, the, the second part is that useful life for five years or more. Five grand or more. Yeah. Yeah. Five years or more useful life. If it has a useful life of five years or less, it's operating. If it's five or more, it's capital. So if, it's a, so if it's a capital expense, just as a question, if, it, if it's a capital expense, 
how how can we look at the funding that's already there? Is it just whatever money I have left from that training just goes back to the town and I'm looking, so I'm not reallocating money and it would be a separate request for for the ten thousand dollars. Or you if you need it in another line item then you could ask the manager. The, the wrinkle here is it's a capital item. Yes. It has a useful life of more than five years. And it's in the yeah, we can, we can talk yeah. more about that. I just, yeah. I just don't want to delay it until right. next year. And then I hear you. Now yeah. That money's gone now. And you haven't submitted a previous capital request for it. I submitted a request for reallocation of funds. But not through capital. Yeah. I'm not sure of the process that it okay. went through it, okay. but it got sent out to everybody. I would it, urge. It, it's an accounting technicality yeah. that it's mm -hmm. on the books. Yeah. yeah. We can we can revive them with it. When when you write or not you specifically, but when the department writes a speed, we're gonna use speeding tickets. <laughs> you write a hundred dollar ticket, a certain percentage of that goes to the state. A certain percentage of it comes to the town. Mm -hmm. Somewhere there's a we have that number. Oh yeah, it comes in on the cherry sheet. Yeah, it's fine with forfeitures. Okay, but that doesn't it doesn't break that number down. It doesn't say this is how much for tickets. It just shows up as fine with fines and forfeitures. So that's any court cost restitution, anything that comes back. Anything that well, it's and no. is it for the whole town or is it for specifically the police department? No, it just just for the town. It comes to the town. Okay. I, I don't know the, the accounting side of it. I just know it always showed up on the cherry sheet if it goes to the town's general fund. It does. But it, it doesn't come back to the doesn't I know it doesn't come back to the yeah. department, but I'm just I'm curious as to now that we have two full-time officers. Mm -hmm. You know, in the real world, we will be writing more tickets and generating yeah. more income. But we don't. You know, we're not. We're not surviving yeah. on writing exactly. tickets. I understand that. Yeah, we never and, looked at it as a revenue builder. That's right. 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 Because it's, Even it's it hard is. because I could write. I could write a thousand tickets. Yeah, but you're going to go to court. The court can take nine hundred of those and say, yeah, they're not responsible. Yeah, yeah. and you know, you're problems. you're. Somebody's got to be really doing something bad to write them a ticket. If they live in this town and you write them a ticket, yeah. that's bad business. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, right. Absolutely. It's always a balance. Oh, yeah. The um, One of the more important questions that we've, we've had concerning the police department, how's the dog? <laughs> Seamus is great. He's a he's a okay. great dog. Okay. We're, no, we're still, he's, he's only two. We're still working through it because he's a he's a little uh, he's a little shy. So he's he's been referred to as the not so comforting comfort dog. <laughs> Has but he bitten anybody? No, no. All right, God, he's, he's hard. Good. He's hard. Good. If you if you ignore him, they'll come up to you and he'll sniff you, he'll lick you, he'll be your best friend. Yeah. But if you try to like let him or yeah. You touch him when he's not looking, then uh -oh. he gets a little a little snappy. Gets a little nervous. He doesn't he doesn't get snappy. He okay. just he'll, He'll All shy right. away from you. Well, okay. he's, he's a great dog. Okay. We've done a lot of training, and I still work with him. He's still with me. He still goes to the coffee with a cop. He still brings him to the senior center. We still do things with him. It's, yeah. He's just slow. He's <laughs> the only dog that I've ever had that <laughs> doesn't want to be around people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm definitely new to this, but are there any grants or any shifts or any programs or anything that you apply for or are seeking? Anything? Uh, so the, the what we currently have pending is there's three grants that we have pending. Two of those are related to taser body cam. Um, so some of the funding that we spent, the fifty-two thousand dollars that we spent to, to get the current equipment that we have, we're getting some reimbursement back for that. Um, that's about twenty thousand dollars right right now. There's another grant for twenty. Right around twenty four thousand dollars. That's getting a receiver for the cruiser. That that got new um, mobile data terminals for for our cars because the ones that we had were pushing eight to ten years old. Which anybody that knows computers, eight or ten years is a long time to get out of a computer, especially when they get used every day and drives around, get bounced around the car. So so those grants have come up for that. There are some cops grants out there. Um, we've used them in the past, like way back when they would give you, you could apply for the COPS grant that could give you a full-time position. And then the, the first year of that grant, the state would pay 75% of 
of their salary the second year they pay 50 and then the third year they pay 25 which gave the town time to kind of catch up and pay the the other percentage as opposed to getting hit all at once those are super competitive now and it's like springfield getting them to hire 50 cops and it's like we don't even apply for them because they don't even look at us anymore uh, so there's there's not there's not much in the way of of that there's a lot of grants out there for programs um for crime reduction programs community development type programs but those are more for we don't have a community policing unit we don't have a detective unit or we don't have a whatever specific unit that we would have to so you're, you're covering our way like at the elementary school you do the active shooter drills and all this stuff you're covering that right out of your own daily yes daily covering and you, yes. you, do, you do a great job at that i don't think they tell me understand what you're going to do with that for the state it's yeah it's fantastic yeah it's a lot it's a lot of work it's it's turned into like fire drills where they do it four times a year yeah. we do active shooter drills four times a year we try to stay up to date on the active shooter plan emergency response plan for the school or we're doing some other things, working on uh, risk management type of stuff, so we can kind of identify a student that may be having a problem before it becomes a problem from a risk management perspective. So we're looking at some protocols and some training for that. Um, we continue with active shooter training from a police side, where we have um, fake guns. I want to, they're real guns, but they they shoot paintballs. Like I say paintballs, um, but they come out of a, a regular. Uh, type of gun. So we actually train hands on. Uh, we have all the, the safety equipment to do that so we can shoot each other up and, and not get hurt. So we do training at the school. We do. You guys do a lot more than just writing tickets. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Writing writing the tickets is kind of. And here's it's thing important, about, but it's a side. A side. And you're doing yourself a disservice by not putting that in black and white and attaching that to a budget because that's value. Here, that's here. value that we need to see and we need to read about. And I know you know it, the guys know it, and probably maybe a few of the select board know it. The yeah. finance community doesn't know that. Most of yeah. the most of the people in town probably don't know that. So yeah. that adds to the value of your department Actually. and the money we put towards your department, and that increases uh, you know the value that you have to yeah. us. I try to put stuff into the town report. I know yeah. not everybody reads that, right? We try to put some stuff on the <laughs> Facebook page, but as a as a budgetary thing, I think it that, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah what you put in the town report is uh, that's to your benefit. You know, the, so many calls, so many uh, breaking and entering, so yeah. many this, so many you know domestics, whatever. Yeah, just to show the and, town. You know, there's a whole page of numbers. Yeah, and that does you a lot of good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. All right. right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Say, say hi to Seamus. Don't scare him. Just you know, approach him slowly. He's fine with me. Okay. Just everybody. That's good. So people, all the all the guys in the department say he's my comfort dog. Yeah. I have much less stress. I have much less anxiety with him with me. Perfect. It is helpful. Okay. Thank you. Well, great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All thank right. You. Well, uh, lo and behold, um, Agricultural Commission is here. Seven thirty. We have absolutely wow. caught right up to where we should be. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Where are we going? Okay, Agricultural the Commission is General Government. Okay. G -G -A -P. Let's take CG eighteen. Um, I can't hear. Section one, section one, right? Here we go. Here we go. GG eighteen agricultural commission. Um, okay. How you doing? Doing good. I don't think we've ever met. I'm Doug. Doug. Oh well. Doug Caldwell. Nice to meet you, Doug. Paul Antea. Finance Committee, let's go around the room. Tom Bahar, Finance Committee. Judy Ross, Finance. We're just showing him because oh. it doesn't have a copy. Oh, Trisha and Casey Cote, I'm an administrator. That's Jess. Brandon Doherty, Finance Committee. Dan Kennedy, Finance. Jim Kirkendall, Finance. All the 
Done. Uh, we have your budget here, just so we're on the same page. Um, you are requesting for 2025, $2,500. Yeah. Okay, good. You want to give us uh, just a little overview of uh, yeah, the yeah. needs of the agricultural? <laughs> One of our members uh, had an interest in, in making those uh, uh, right to farm community signs yeah. for the town. And so I got uh, kind of a back of the envelope estimate of a hundred and a quarter to a hundred and a half per sign. We were, he was thinking four to six signs. And I figured request a grand and just return what didn't get used. Okay. So he's working with Keith on that, on right. where the signs could go. Now, do you own a farm yourself? I do. Whereabouts? Uh, well, we're on Route 5. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and we're on uh, Long Play Brook. All right. Yeah. Um, well, Tom, seeing how you're in the business, um, do you want to inquire? Oh, <laughs> your son's on the committee. Oh, your son's on the committee? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Which one? Mike. Like, okay. Actually, he hasn't been appointed yet. Oh, he hasn't. So I can I can say what I want. Well, you can say what you want. You know? um, just I think you know, and I'll just speak my mind. I I think the agricultural component of this town is very important. Um, I don't know how the select board feels. This is just myself. It's not a finance committee. I, I think we'll second that. Yeah. You'll second that. Okay. And I, I think whatever we can do to help. Keep that environment is extremely important. Right. So uh, I see you've got a request in here for fifteen hundred dollars for a clerk that hadn't been there. What? Okay, so that that was actually uh, that was Brian's suggestion. Um, you know, way back when we were, I think myself and maybe a couple of the other town committees were having trouble with sort of the administration of the committee. Mm -hmm. And um, and so Brian suggested requesting some money to contribute perhaps to a person that might get hired. <clears throat> and if, if that happens, great. Okay. If it doesn't. Yeah, okay, so there's no one in that position. It's a sort of a placeholder for yeah. a, a group. Exactly. Okay. Oh, and, this and that was Brian's suggestion. Yeah, he suggested yeah. 1500 <laughs> Maybe there's another path to the same yeah. destination. Yes, yeah, you could not share specific. Or, yeah, that's what this right. is. They're going to contribute. And, and, and we've done that here. with other commissions sure. too, with the other placeholder money in case yeah. we have it. Yep. Yeah. What's um, there? My question is what's with the signs? I mean, where are they going to be? What, what's the purpose? So, uh, Wheatley is what's called a right to farm community. Okay. Um, Which means essentially. Well, it means that you might be slowed down behind a tractor on what seems like a fast road. Uh, it means that you, you might hear noises that uh, a farm has to make at night running irrigation or something like that. Um, the, the town voted to be a right to farm community at some point in yeah. the past. I don't know when it happened. Hadley has some signs simply saying this is a right to farm, farm company. Oh, yeah. Um, so it assumes that people know what that means. That, that... And hopefully it would inspire some to look it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you just take a minute and educate me on what the agriculture committee does and what kind of things come before you guys? Uh, almost nothing. <laughs> no, I'm just like, you guys always do something, but what, what comes before you guys? I love you. We're just advisory to other okay. town committees uh, on. Things that APR uh, stuff, APR stuff, uh, like the Norse Farms thing. Would you guys have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. an opinion on that, but yep. um, you know, it's not a, I, yeah, we just okay. had another APR okay. on River Road. Okay, you yeah. know, we just had another APR on yeah. River Road. Yeah, yeah. not long. Yeah, Did you get involved with the Grange at all? Or? No, not person. I mean, I, yeah, not but as a committee, not as a member. Okay, okay. Like, so. Do you know if he's left over? Yeah, I'm just talk to him. Because so I'm married to him, um, and for many years the Commonwealth paid him quite a, um, for the Commonwealth a good amount of money to work with ag comms across the, the state, and he was always traveling here and there. But because of some politics, as I understand it, at 
MDAR or wherever. Uh, for, I, think, I don't know if we did it for 10 years or something, but anyway, it's been four or five years. I didn't even know we still had an ad com here. And so when you say nothing, I, I appreciate your candor. I kind of feel like that's thought, like these ad coms that were super active in Massachusetts were paying for a consultant to help you know, have meetings and hearings and, and stuff, organizational stuff. It seems like that is just tapered off. So, anyway, I didn't know we still had one. Wow. So, do you hope downstream to, you know, help farmers with, you know, crops or deciding what crops to plant and how it's to get not, crops to market? It's not like that. No, it's not like no. that. Okay. No, it's more <clears throat> if, let's say, I want to put my farm in APR. Yeah. One of the steps is to go to the to go to the ag commission and they can support it or mm -hmm. not support it yeah more land use issues. uh yeah more land use issues uh it's more offering an opinion to another yeah. committee about yeah. how a decision yeah. might impact agriculture in the town. yeah if, if i have a, a problem with the conservation commission yeah and I don't think they're supporting the ag my agricultural side of it. I could go to the Ag Commission and they could make, you know, you could voice your opinion to the Conservation Commission, whether it would make a difference or not. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. think anything like that has ever happened, but that's right. We do rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> it would, you know, it yeah, it's something that like you're you'll be active doing APR stuff and then that'll and then you know you might not be there might not be anything going on for a couple of years and then something will pop up and to be said, you know they used to be fundamental for farms projects. Yeah. yeah. They were the key cog to a whole thing. They yeah. answered everything. And, and, and they also do things like putting up these signs to just right. promote yeah. agriculture and right. that. because <laughs> you know Doug knows as well as I do when you're I don't care if you're going down the road on Sunday morning at seven o'clock or if it's you know the middle of the day inevitably somebody is going to come up behind you going three times faster than you are and you got sorry a, a 16 foot piece of equipment going down a 24 foot road yeah and, yeah I've seen it you know if there's a sign if when you <laughs> drive every not every road but every major road coming into town has a sign that says Waitley is a right to farm community. Yeah. And if he wants to move his big piece of equipment at seven o'clock on a Sunday morning, he has the, the town says you've got the right to do that. You've got the right to, do it. The right to farm in this town. Got it. Okay. Well, I think we have a better understanding as to what the Agricultural Commission does moving forward. And uh, $2,500 budget um, will be in the discussion. Sounds and uh, right now, I don't see any issues. Okay. So thank, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Have a great night. You yeah. too. Okay. Well, just, we, are, we are now, we are now, um, well, we are 10 minutes ahead. Okay. okay, that's where we are. We're just going to have a little snippet on the personnel committee. We have two individuals who are um, on in that committee. Um, can, can we just, what would you like to discuss first? Rich and... Um, so you received the memo um, that Jess sent out later this afternoon. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And then the recommendation of the personnel committee, uh, three percent for FY twenty five, yeah. um, and then the detail. Um, I'll pass this around of um, of how it affects each employee. This does not include. It's the same thing. I just uh, it doesn't include any individual staff adjustments. Um, and the, that's addressed in the memo as well. Okay. So, okay, so that's so that's the increase. It's like when we said three percent, we already gave the three percent. That doesn't apply. That's a con. That was six. Yeah, so that would come up. But 
I should probably read the memo to frame the discussion rather than going to the to the existing bond. Do you want? This is the memo you know referring to. Yeah, that that's oh, right. right. Yeah, yeah, read that. Do we have more paperwork coming? Oh, okay. I thought I'm just organizing. Okay. Um, all right, let's just, um, has everyone had a chance to read um, the memo from Jess that uh, came out earlier? Yeah. Okay. Um, would there, anyone like to um, surface any questions or make any comments um, regarding what we have in front of us? Okay, then I'll start. Um, so essentially, the the committee has come up with three percent as a cola moving forward. In addition to increases by personnel. Okay. Um, okay. I just want to uh, I just want to reflect back a little bit to last year. Okay, in 2023, um, the personnel committee asked for 7.2, if I recall that. Um, and a, a great deal of that was based on what happens in regards to the CPI. And I, I, I think what we have to embrace is that CPI has very little to do with small towns like Wakeland. 97% of the data that goes into CPI is from urban communities. It's just the way it is. Um, now last year, we were looking 7.2, but the actual, what it ends up being is 5.5. .5, so you're looking at about 2% above that. And now here we are in January, 2024, and the CPI is 2.1. And the request is three. Um, so I'll just bring that out. And if we turn the page and we look at sources from towns, I guess comparative towns, um, I don't know how West Tisbury, a Martha's Vineyard, ends, ends up in there at 4.8%. I'm just that, that that one seems to be that one should be thrown out. Um, Yeah, Conway is not in. So, all good questions. So, the personnel committee hasn't seen the data that you have. They voted in the absence of that information. So, what did they? What did they base it? They for? based it on the town salary survey that they do every year that the chief just referred to, along with reviewing the Franklin Regional Council of Government survey. Um, that's what their 3% was based on. At that meeting, as my memo indicates, they asked for some additional information relative to health insurance increases, 
whether communities had wage and classification systems, whatever. I sent that request out on the um, small town administrators list, sir. Mm -hmm. That's 10,000 or under communities. That's why you have West Tisbury, whatever. Okay. Of the eight communities that you use, Conway, Hinsdale, and Hatfield did not respond to the survey, so we do not have that. Mm -hmm. Of the five that did respond, the average COLA for those five communities is 3%. Mm -hmm. I did that math today. So um, so I think I think that addresses your question. Yeah. I followed the CPI here just because traditionally that's what folks do. I get, you. And, I get it. And that's what Brian's done. Um, mm -hmm. sure. I think a um, couple of issues. One is, as I speak to you in the memo, um, it's really hard, as Chief mentioned, to recruit and attract people. It's yep. really, really tough. Um, even in the short time I'm here, we're facing challenges retaining the staff that we do have, losing them to other people. Um, it's just a challenge of a small community, and now smaller communities are starting to coach other communities because they just raise their salary. Yep. So um, when the personnel committee meets tomorrow night, they're looking at six more additional positions to, under their policy, bring them just to medium mm -hmm. of all the Franklin County area regional <laughs> towns. Yep. And some of those towns, they've done two positions. They've done two or three years in a row. So, you know, we have Dougie retiring in the highway department. We have Keith retiring. Um, so we have some real challenges on that on that, um, that front in terms of individually. It's almost like spot mm -hmm. zoning you know, addressing them in a piece bail. And the full-time and part-time police officers are on that list that she just alluded yeah. to. Um, because you're adjusting them annually because nobody can get these people. Um, and one of the challenges is, is because we just give our folks a COLA and we're not in a, a professionally established wage and classification system where a police officer can come to Waitley and if we're competing against them with Sunderland or Hatfield or something else, they can say, all right, I'm going to start at 52, then in a year I'm going to go to 54, and yep. then another year I'm going to go to 56 step, because I'm fully seasoned, and I'm going to get the 2% or the 3% COLA. Yep. And that provides predictability, it provides hope and mm -hmm. retention, and we save time and money doing this for you folks every year, the, the committee doing the folks, it's predictable. The personnel committee is only looking at reclassification requests, which they won't have to look at for a long time. Once a brand new system goes in, you redline people that are overpaid, which you don't really have here. Yep. Um, and it, it, it's another recruiting tool and a retention tool for the town. The problem is A, nobody wants to do them anymore. And B, um, they cost for a town this size, probably 18 to 20,000. But it's Pay me now or pay me later. If you do it, then we wouldn't have to have this conversation every yep. year. You'd still have the COLA discussion, yeah. but not this adjustment of, mm -hmm. you know, how many full time co employees do we have? Yep. And every year you come every and do the staff, old. you're doing half the staff adjustments for them. Or if someone wants to leave, the select board's faced with do we let them walk and all that investment and time and training? Or and we go out the door and try to something new. We just had a heck of a time trying to replace Cynthia in the assessor's office. A heck of a time. And you know what? That rate was pretty darn attractive. Yeah. But it's one of those positions that in a small town is incredibly difficult to replace. Yeah, and, and it ends up we're not replacing Cynthia with the person we're replacing. We're contracting for the service service and not hiring it. Mm -hmm. So you know, unfortunately, you know, with personnel um, and the staff here, I have to say, in the short time I've been here in this building is absolutely terrific. And yep. some of them I were agree. here 27 years ago when I was here, like Pete and Fran and Tom and you, um, because yep. people really care about the town. Yep. But this dance and this anxiety that the staff have oh, yeah. here around it, um, I think a wage in class would really maybe settle some of that down. But, um, I think it would make it easier. Yeah. Certainly for this group. Yeah. yeah. And the select board. And the select 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 board. Um, I don't, but I, I'll I'll tell you what. It, I'll tell you the monkey wrench in that though is if we have a step system and all of a sudden 
Hatfield has a little better step system, that's not going to stop migration of people. But what it will stop is negotiation at this point. Right. Because we'll say, we have a step system. You knew the step system when you yeah. took the job. You knew the salary. That's what we got. It's kind of like it's kind of like a contra uh, you know a verbal contract, kind of. And there's two other factors that go into it. That's a big part. The other thing is mm -hmm. most of our staff is not working 40 hours a week, 35 hours a week. No, we have very so, few full time 40 hour a week. Employees. So there's that opportunity to jump to a full time position. Yeah. That's very attractive. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is. People want to work in a good work environment. They want to feel valued. They want to feel like their work is meaningful. Yep. We have that here. That's a big plus for us is yep. that I think that there's a good working relationship. It's a nice building. Sure. I've been in nine city you remember towns. The old yeah. This is the nicest town hall ever been Springfield City Hall that I've ever worked in. That's saying a lot. Yep. Um, it's and you know why we have this? But, you know why we have this? Because of this committee right here. That's right. Yeah, and well, Brian. Yeah. And Brian, I was in central school for three and a half, so thank you. Right. But, um, um, but I mean, that's important too. People will leave for money, but they'll also leave if they're unhappy or they feel undervalued or there's poor morale, yeah. Yeah. you know, or they're stressed about getting a raise and their health insurance mm -hmm. has just gone up eight percent. So their net is going to be maybe at five because right. the health insurance has gone up. And I do have all the relative health insurance data from the survey, but I didn't include it because mostly everybody here is in Hampshire County. Um, so, and that's 8% for everybody. Brenda, I'm sorry. Brenda? No, no, no. I, I have uh, two pieces for the tonight, so I wish I had brought the last two personal community meetings. He circulated one page chart showing housing costs and Whaley and what our median salary is. And basically, not that you know, many, if any of them, well, some employees are required to work here, but he is trying to drive home the point that our employees can't afford to live in Waitley, and maybe we'll be able to circulate it's just a one-page chart, and it has the sourcing. I'm sorry, it's not really helpful for me to talk about a chart that I can't put in front of you, but so he, he's, he's brought talking. it twice because to him, that's what it, that speaks to the issues that he has with his people and his hiring and his retention, and yeah, you know, housing is just one piece of it. Um, but I will also say, so I've been on finance committee for three years, and I remember personnel coming before us and not thinking too much about it. But Keith has also said, and I'm not speaking for Keith, he was speaking more for the committee, that these meetings with finance committee have been a real source of stress for kind of the employees or personnel committee. Um, and I guess I'm not very observant, or I didn't notice it as much in the first two years when I was still just figuring out what finance committee even does that, um, yeah, that's a, a difficult thing that it should understandable that it's a source of stress. But then when you see that our employees can't afford to live in Waitley or many of them can't, and there's a variety of reasons for that, not just property prices and what we pay, not full time and other things. But um, so I guess, those things have had an impact on me since I joined the personnel committee yep. for this year. And um, I mean, I know no one wants our property taxes to go up. And I I understand all of that. And, and you now I work for a law firm. We lost people to Hartford and Boston because we just can't pay in Springfield what they can pay in Hartford. So I understand that. But um, that has been a little bit of eye, an eye opener for me to see it from the employee's perspective more than I was able to before when I was just looking at graphs and numbers and all that. Yeah. Um, well, there's uh, look, there's nothing we can do about the marketplace. You know, it's a it's 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 a tough market to buy property in, regardless of who you are or where you what are. community in Franklin County or even beyond. Um but the um Look, we all want to make sure that we can hang on to good employees, and we have a lot of them. Um, um, what else is there to be said? I mean, if 3% is what's going to do it, um, then that's what's going to do it. Um, yeah, 3% uh, doesn't bother me. No, it doesn't. 
Um, I, I think the whole personally, and I've been saying this for a while that the whole every you know the Keith is going to leave, Douglas is going to leave, and you know not to pick on the highway department, but the you know the job descriptions are going to have to change, and you know Keith did it for thirty some odd years. He's been doing it forty years. Yeah. It's the job is exponentially different than it was 40 years ago. It's and so I, you know, I don't think you can, the town can't afford number, I don't think you can afford to hire someone to just take Keith's place. You've got to hire somebody, you know, there's got to be a complete change in the job description. Descriptions, that, yes, throughout the department. And if we if we have to pay, you know, I don't want Keith to be insulted, but if we have to pay somebody more money to have more qualifications, then that's what we're going to have to do. But that's a personnel personnel committee who writes the job descriptions. I can tell you, and this is a true story. Uh, when I first was a member of the finance committee. Um, the uh, the chairman of that committee was our police chief. Okay, so we want to talk about conflict. And okay, so moving forward, um, he he was essentially he would make the decisions yeah. for the committee. He would tell you he would would have a he would have a little discussion with town administrator. Then he'd come back say, okay, we're going to do this, and okay, everybody vote. Okay, we're in, and he made it very clear. That town employees were never going to make at or more than what a school teacher was going to make in our town. Made it very clear. And then when he left, probably before he left, we made a decision that we needed a personnel committee. Instead of having one person make this decision for everybody, we needed a personnel committee to come forward and what? Okay, now we transfer to, to where we are today, and we have a personnel committee, and we're trying their best. But what happens? It comes back to the finance committee, and, and we shouldn't have to make this decision. We don't know what she does or, or what, what any employee really does in town. We don't see them on a daily basis. We <clears> run <throat> into them every now and then, something happens. So it's unfair to the employee to have individuals making decisions for their salary. That job belongs to the select board. Did we, did we ask last year for a written statement of what their job qualifications yeah. were? Yep. Yeah. What their duties are. And we never got it from the select board. So the select board's job Keith reports to the select board, all the department heads report to the select board, and there is a bylaw that says every town employee is supposed to have a review every year by their department head or manager of whomever. Yeah. That doesn't happen. Okay, so we have a lot of things that need to be wrapped up, and the unfortunate part coming forward all these years. Now, all of a sudden, we have a discussion here, and what's going to happen? We moved from having one person 25 years ago making a decision for everybody in town. And now, 25 years later, we all sit down, we all vote. I'm the chairman, or who's ever the chair. We'll vote this side, we'll vote that side, and I'm the tiebreaker. What's it come down to? One person making a decision, making a decision all over again. That is so unfair. And so it's it's unfair to us. It's unfair to the employees. It is the responsibility of the select board to make sure that individuals in this town are well compensated. And I know they want to do that. And um, so moving forward, I think we're. I mean, it seems like a good number. Ultimate, yeah, I, that's why I'd say I'm in. We can, beat the, we can beat this to death. I make a motion we approve 3% of 
Hold on. Well, when we're not, oh, do, do we need to vote this trip? Um, no, no. We okay. don't have to, but all with right. all due respect, if you did, then Lynn and I can actually change all what those line percent? items because none of them have it. Okay. All right, let's vote on it. Okay, before we do that, I got to ask you another thing. Okay, when Brian was here, this is what we would do. He would he would add up all the requests as is. Okay, then plug that into what the state did last year. Yeah. So that we could look at what our tax rate, you know, would be taking the state's numbers from last year, taking the requests from this year, add them together, and then we would look at the hit on a certain um, property value. I'm sorry, what what the tax rate, like the meat, the average home, the right. average, average taxpayer. Home, right, the average taxpayer, what the average taxpayer would get here. Um, you, we know it's not perfect, okay, but ballpark. it's a ballpark. And then when we have a vote meeting, we have a number to look at. So you will have that. We don't have yet the right. the um, last thing you said about average, sample average price. Right. Because everybody's been coming in with a budget number change. So, okay. Okay. We, right. so every Wednesday when Lynn comes in, I tell her like tonight is a budget change or whatever. And now we've got to reduce, and increase, reduce. Everybody who's come to see you, okay. there's been at least one or two that have changed their budget. No. Council on Aging. It happens. Josh came in, yeah. met with me last week, reduced his budget. So every time we get a number, gotcha. we have to go and plug it and in. Plug it in. Amy came in today with that. Yeah, Amy came in with that. Right. So yeah. we will have that for you before your next meeting. Okay. Now that we think we have it. We think we yeah. got. Yeah. So let's get back to uh, Tom. You got to make a motion. I make a motion. We approve a 3% COLA. All the town employees. I second that. All those are second for Jim. Yeah, all those all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we're we're good. I'll second it. We're making a record. We're making a record. We're making a recommendation. We do all do make all that's how we do. Yeah. That's the chairman. Do we do that? The last motion? Not what we made a motion to adjourn and it was seconded. What second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, you know something? 805. Not bad. Bad.